Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on Business Incorporated. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwawo. Coming up on the show today, Morocco to issue first sovereign Islamic bond worth 1 billion dirhams. South Africa's ESCOM plans foreign bond sale and has also cut capital expenditure. Plus, ExxonMobil seeks to sell out of Tanzanian gas field. Let's get the show started now with the markets. And um, here in Africa, while Egypt is closed for the weekend, the Nigerian market and the JSC index in South Africa were in the red at intraday. The NSC index was down 0.12%. The JSC index was down 0.64%, and Egypt closed in the green 0.09% on Thursday. Okay, I also closed in the green on Thursday. In the Middle East, the markets are closed for the weekend, but on Thursday, only the Abu Dhabi market closed in the positive. The index was up 0.22%. Dubai was down 0.46%. Qatar led losses by 0.92% and Saudi Arabia was down 0.46%. And in Europe, bosses there were lower in early Friday trading as investors worried about world trade ahead of this weekend's G7 meeting in Canada. Let's get a sense of how this is driving sentiment with all rich bats standing by to talk to us. Hello, Rich. A beautiful Friday to you. Thank you. <laughs> to you too. Right. So tough words over trade relations by world leaders ahead of uh, G7 meetings this weekend in Quebec. Is this meeting and the rhetoric uh, priced in market sentiments or there are expectations of more fireworks when the meeting actually takes off? Well, you know, the markets are full of anxiety at the moment. Uh, they're nervous ahead of the uh, beginning of this meeting uh, because already there have been tough words exchanged uh, on Twitter and uh, on reports of a meeting, for example, between Canada's Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau and uh, France's President Emmanuel Macron. And uh, the share prices here have been going down right now. And here in Germany, they're recovering. Uh, but uh, across Europe, uh, you're seeing uh, the mark also of the nervousness on share prices. And, uh, of course, this nervousness could increase if there is any animosity, antagonism that gets clear uh, in this meeting over the weekend, then you will see a clear reaction uh, here in the markets at the moment. I think priced in uh, is that uh, there's going to be some uh, aggression, there's going to be some disagreement, but let's say not a major uh, uh, eruption. But if the meeting surprises in a very negative way, you're going to see major reactions here, of course. And talking about share prices, why are the shares of Deutsche Bank and Commerce Bank in the negative territory early today as the news of their possible merger was announced? Was, uh, what is in this deal? Would it be a good deal and for who? It's, uh, I think, uh, would be a good deal for both banks if they could make a mer merger work. Uh, but uh, it's, if it indeed came to a merger or merger talks, it would be extremely costly. Uh, I talked to several people on this issue today, and they say that if there was a merger, then there would be massive redundancies. Both banks have all the departments that you can think of, and they're very well staffed. And uh, you'd have to get rid of a lot of people. It's a politically hot issue, especially with the federal government still holding a 15% stake in the Commerz Bank, you know, one of, one of the two banks at stake here. And the people I've talked to have told me basically uh, the two institutions are already in the uh, course of restructuring and uh, they're not ready yet to, to move on to a next stage like a merger. Others say exactly because restructuring is going slowly and uh, because even with the job slashings they have in mind at the moment, costs won't come down, a merger would be exactly the thing, basically the only answer available at the end. Okay, let's look into next week. Of course, it's big for the European Central Bank meeting in Latvia. What would be the chief focus, the euro or geopolitics? And what are investors and traders watching as we head into the weekend? 
I think the geopolitics will be an important backdrop for the meeting uh, because, of course, uh, depending on how trade goes and how uh, the situation in the Eurozone goes with the Italian government slowly uh, coming into the office uh, and, uh, of course, other issues as well, um, it, it plays a role in growth, inflation, and that impacts uh, ECB policy. But the main focus will be on what the ECB can tell the public and can tell the people here behind me uh, in the markets. Um, what exactly will be the road to ending quantitative easing? What kind of ex exit strategy is there? When will tapering begin? And uh, depending on how that's worded, that can have either a very positive or a very negative effect on the market, or the people here could say, well, we need more information, we're not going to act really now. Um, if there is a surprise, uh, it, 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 there could be major eruptions here because, of course, at the moment, um, nobody's really ready to accept much higher interest rates here in the Eurozone. Uh, if the ECB acts, then uh, it could uh, trigger a movement in that direction. All right, thank you very much, uh, Ulrich. It's been a wonderful time out with you this week. Uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you. We'll move over now to the U.S., where stock index futures tumbled ahead of the open, weighed down by negative sentiments seen by markets overseas. Around 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Dow futures fell 144 points, indicating a negative open of 104.41 points. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 futures also indicated a lower start to the session for their respective markets. The move in pre-market trade come after U.S. markets finished Thursday's session on a mixed note, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average finished yesterday's trade in the black. Other markets failed to secure gains by the close. Investors remain jittery on Friday as another G7 summit kicks off in Canada's Quebec today. President Donald Trump is scheduled to appear at the meeting along with other major leaders, including those who currently govern nations that Trump has inflicted tariffs upon. One aspect that's put investors on edge is a fresh tweet by Trump, who accused France and Canada of levying massive tariffs and establishing non-monetary barriers. On data, at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, the wholesale trade export will be published. No other major data or earnings are scheduled to be published. And in Asia, stocks closed lower on Friday, with major markets in the region recording declines as investors' sentiment turned cautious after recent gains seen earlier in the week. The Nikkei 225 declined 0.56%, to close at 22,694.50 points after four straight sessions of gains. Elsewhere, South Korea's Kospi edged down by 0.77% to 2,451.58 as automakers, steelmakers and technology dragged the index lower. Losses in greater China markets tipped through the session. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index fell 1.76%. Mainland stocks finished the day lower by around the same level, with the Shanghai Composite down 1.36% at 3,067.13, but off its session low, the Shenzhen Composite closed down 0.94%.